All right, here we are, part two of the first lesson from chapter seven. And we're talking about sampling distributions. Just as a quick reminder, because beginning of the year was a long time ago, parameters are numbers that describe a population. And statistics are numbers that describe a sample. And the way that I always talk about it, and I know Common Core doesn't says, you know, don't teach them tricks. Parameter, population, statistic, sample, PPSS. All right. Now, this is going to be something that's really important that sometimes people tend to forget. And that is what the symbols end up meaning. All right. So over here, if you have a parameter, so we're talking about the population here, we are going to go through and we're going to talk about mu, we're going to talk about p, and we're going to talk about sigma. Okay, sigma standard deviation, mu is mean, p is for proportions. That's where we don't know how many people are actually in the population. We just know what the true proportion is, so what part of that is. If you're talking about the statistics, then we're going to do x bar for mean. We're going to do little s for standard deviation. Then we're going to go p hat for the population proportion. Okay. For part two to worry about, sampling distributions. Um, it shows the statistic found in all possible sample sizes of n. So what will end up happening here is you're going to go through and you make out a dot plot there. And then again, remember, each one of these here is going to be a statistic from one sample. Now, again, what we're talking about today, and we're going to talk about, for those of you guys who are worrying about, well, what happens if we can't find all the different possible samples? Don't, we're going to go there. We're starting simple. We'll build on off that. I would hope that the previous six chapters have shown that. Luke and Lindsay bought. Built a really, really good set. And then lastly, remember, a statistic is an unbiased estimator. Okay, so the statistic that you're looking at is a good estimator for the population if the mean of the sampling distribution is equal to the parameter. All right, I'll put a little... So what will end up happening there then is that so if you're finding a, if you know the true population mean and you can find a statistic that matches up with that, then you're going to say, all right, that means that we're having a good, we can use this sample statistic to estimate what's going on in the population. Okay. Another thing to remember that is when, and we talked about this briefly in the part one, when increasing the sample size, the sample distribution variability also decreases. As the sample gets bigger, our numbers get closer back in. If you've done consumer ed, that's part of the reason why index funds have said so popular because there's not so many fluctuations. Because you have so many stocks, it brings the fluctuations in. All right, for part two, you're going to talk about the James family here. They have five kids. I'm going to have you go through and play with some things. I would hit pause now, work through this, and I'll see you in a second. All right, so these James family has Jocelyn and Elise and Michael and Erica and Sarah, ages 8, 8, 14, 16, and 18, respectively. And so we give you a table and ask you to find the sample average of their means. Sorry for throwing things. Um, find their sample average here as they go. So you're going to go through here. So we've got uh, Jocelyn and Alyssa, Jocelyn and Michael, Jocelyn and Erica, et cetera, et cetera. So we added up their ages divided by 2. So we get 11, 12, 13, 11, 12, 13, 15, 16, 17. Okay. Then they're going to ask you to make a sampling distribution of that, of sample size 2. So we're going to go through there and we get that. All right. And then lastly, I shouldn't say, no, almost lastly. So it says, what's the mean sampling distribution, or what's the mean sampling distribution of the sample mean? So we're finding the mean of the mean. So these are all means. We're going to find the average of the means. So you're going to add all these up, boom, 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 and you get an answer of 12.8. It says, what's the mean of the population? So if I add up the actual ages of the kids, the 8, the 8, the 14, the 16, and the 18, I also get 12.8. Ooh, that seems nice. Is it always going to be that nice, Mr. Hayes? Probably not, honestly. Is a sample mean an unbiased estimator of the population mean? Well, yeah, because yes, the means of, sample, of the sampling distribution of X bar is it equal to the population, so it's an unbiased estimator. If these two numbers are equal or relatively close to equal. We'll talk more about that as we go. Unbiased estimator, we're good to go. If it's not, we'll talk about what to do there as well. So suppose we had taken sample sizes of three instead of size two. Would the variability of the sampling distribution be larger, or smaller, or the same? As we talked about above, it would actually go smaller because variability decreases whenever you increase the sample size. All right. So I hope that helps. 
I hope you find that useful. Um, if you have any questions, throw them down in the comments. Obviously, subscribe, hit like, all of that other good stuff. Um, we're going to continue and expound on this idea of what we're doing here in terms of taking samples. We're going to still talk about the Chapter 6 test, but we're going to go through and we're going to talk about what happens as we, if you can't take all the different possible combinations. All right, see you in a few. Bye.